Stories of the Bible, Samson and Delilah. This is Samson, hey. who was the last judge of Israel. Samson was very strong, and he was supposed to bring God's people victory over their enemies, who were the Philistines. Now Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. Oh, hey there. And the Philistines came to Delilah What's going on? and convinced her to find out what the secret to Samson's strength was. Hmm. They promised her a great amount of money if she could do this. Now you're coming. Hey. Come in. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what would it take to tie you up securely? Well... Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dropped, I would become as weak as anyone else. You ain't here! So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings. <laughs> Look what I got! Go on, try. And she tied Samson up with them. Ha-ha, <laughs> see? Hello, Samson! She cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings. Let me at him! So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Hey, wait a minute. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Eh, all right. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> Let me try. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him up with them. See? Oh, no! And again, Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. What? Where? Let me at him. But again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Then Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me, how can you be tied up securely? All right, I'll tell you. Samson replied, If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with a loom shuttle, I would become as weak as anyone else. <laughs> now he got him. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. <laughs> Again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Oh, let me at him. But Samson woke up and yanked his hair away from the loom and the fabric. You gotta be kidding me. Then Delilah pouted, How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? Hey, come on. No. You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. All right, all right. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as anyone else. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, you. So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned. Oh, Samson. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep. And then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. Samson's strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. <laughs> when he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. Oh, wh what's going on? But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and took him to prison.
the miracle of mercy. David and Saul. This is David. Hey! David was a shepherd who lived in Israel. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul was strong and tall and looked like everything a king should be. But Saul did not follow God like he was supposed to. And for that reason, God chose to take the kingdom from Saul's family and give it to David's. David became a great warrior. Arr! And everyone in the kingdom loved David. Huh? This made Saul jealous, and Saul hated David because he thought he would try to kill him and take the throne from his family. So Saul wanted to kill David. Whoa! Saul hunted David, but he couldn't catch him. One day, Saul heard that David was in the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul gathered 3,000 of his skilled fighters and went to find and kill David. During Saul's search for David, he went in a cave to relieve himself. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they said, Now's your chance, David. This is God telling you that he will give you your enemy to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. But then David began to think that it was not right for him to take Saul's life. For no matter how much hardship and difficulty Saul had caused him, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had placed over Israel. So David told his men to back off, and he did not let them kill King Saul. They waited until after Saul had left the cave. And then David ran out of the cave and shouted after Saul, My king! Why do you listen to people who say I am trying to harm you? Look, I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting me. David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. Saul said, Is that really you, David? And he began to cry. Saul said, you are a better man than I. You have been amazingly kind to me today, for when God put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would have done this? And now I realize that you are surely going to be king, and the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. But promise me that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. Now Saul continued to cause difficulty in David's life. But David kept his promise and in time, David did become king of Israel. David was dearly loved by God and Israel did flourish under his rule because David did everything that God wanted him to do and he was a man after God's own heart. Stories of the Bible. Jesus feeds the 5,000. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey, everyone. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. A crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. 
Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Um... Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Hey, I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up, There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, Tell everyone to sit down. Bye, everyone. Sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. There you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. Want some more? I'm all good. Thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers, so that nothing is wasted. You got it. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps, left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. 